Okay, so this is problem uh, eight on the test number four. We have uh, two lights at the bottom of a pool. They're shining up at different angles to the surface. And so the question is, what happens with each one? So <clears throat> what's going to happen to this light beam? Is it going to reflect, refract, or absorb? Refract. L1, L1 yeah. It's going to refract. It's going to go through the water and it will come out and it will come out at a different angle. Offhand, do you know will it bend away from the normal or towards the normal? Away. Away. Okay, going from high end to low end, you bend away. Going from low end to high end, you bend towards. So the question is, Essence? Sorry, what, what do you mean high end to low end away? High end to low end, we bend away. Okay, low cool. end to high end, we bend toward. Okay. So if I was coming this way, I'd bend toward. We'd have the same two angles, but we're coming at it from a different direction. Is this okay. is the end values? Yes. So. So you don't need to know that, because you're going to apply Snell's Law, you should get the right answer. But if you know that, then when you screw up Snell's Law, you say, oh, something happened here. Okay, now, 10% of you took the angle to the surface. <laughs> Every angle in optics is to the normal. Every angle in optics is to the normal. Every angle in optics is to the normal. That might be something you want to remember. All right. So the question is then, what, uh, what is this angle? What is that angle? So if it goes through that surface, then what happens? And we're going to use Snell's Law. Okay. All right, now, which one is your N1 and which one is your N2? I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter. Pick one and be done with it. But stay consistent. Okay? How many want the water to be N1? Sure. Alright, there you go. So, we'll, on this side, we'll do this is the water. This is the air. Okay? It doesn't matter if it's vice versa, but just keep the N and its angle together. Okay? So, what's the N of water? 1.33. That has no dimensions. It's a ratio of velocity, so it has no, no units. What's N2? Well, N2 is the air, so that's 1 times the sine of theta 2. Okay, so we're going to label this 2. Does that make sense? Okay. So what do we get here? Well, I need to calculate that and take the inverse sine of it. So theta 2 equals somehow lost the sine of 30 degrees. The, the, this in, incoming angle just disappeared from this somehow. I don't know how. And then you had 1.33 over 1. And when you went to take the inverse sine, sine values only go from negative 1 to positive 1. You take the inverse sine of 1.33, something's wrong. This is a red flag. This is the calculator telling, oh, you're an idiot. Okay. Listen. So. Step back and figure out what went wrong. If you get a value here that's bigger than 1 and your calculator pukes, the calculator's not wrong, okay? That can be our rule for the final. So if that's the case, then you need to go back and redo your algebra or whatever, reset up the equation so that you have a better feel for what's going on, okay? So can someone calculate this? 41.6. 41.6, 41.7 degrees. 
okay? And so this angle here is 41.6 degrees, okay? So it comes up, hits the surface, it goes through the surface and bends outward. Does that make sense? Okay. A lot of people got this right. You know, you were, you were trying to do that. What about for light number two? We asked if it reflects, refracts, or absorbs. It reflects. How many people think it reflects? Okay. Why? Past the critical angle. Okay, but we don't know that when we start, do we? How would we know that? Let's say I didn't remember anything about the critical angle. What if I did this? What, would anything happen? What would? You yeah, yeah. yeah. You calculate with pu. That's a sign. That's a sign. So, if you again, if your calculator goes haywire, then that's telling you something. Now, um, since this angle is so big, it happens to be beyond the critical angle, and so it will reflect. And we'll go back and calculate the critical angle. But why, if it reflects, what, where does the ray go? Back down. It goes down and to the right. So this would happen. And that's 65 degrees. Okay. Number of you calculate the critical angle and then put the critical angle here. Okay. So we'll talk about what the critical angle is. Okay. Reflection. Angle in, angle out, they're equal. Okay, so no, no need to calculate anything on a reflection. Okay, so this would be our case of total internal reflection. All right. So, but we really haven't proved to ourselves in this problem right now that it, it does that. So we need to calculate the critical angle. Who can define the critical angle for me? Okay, if this gets bigger, this will get bigger, and as this gets just to the right point, this goes to 90 degrees, the output angle. That 41.6 gets bigger and bigger and bigger. At some point, it becomes 90 degrees. The critical angle is the input angle here that creates an output of 90 degrees. Okay, that's what the critical angle is. So, we have the same equation we just fill it out differently. This, and then we don't know this angle. We're looking for the critical angle. We know N1, so that's 1.33 sine of the critical angle. That's what's happening in the water. When it goes out of the water, we know that N is 1, and it's the sine of 90 degrees. What's the sine of 90 degrees? 1. So this all becomes 1, okay? Divide by 1.33, do an inverse sine. Okay. So this is the input angle that goes, hits the surface and creates a refracted angle of 90 degrees. All right. What did we get? 48.75. So if the input angle is 48, the output angle will be very shallow. It would be huge. It would be like 88 or 89, you know, almost at the surface. If it's 48.85, then this it will just run right along the surface. And then if it's bigger than 48.75, it will reflect. Okay. Does that make sense? So that's just the critical angle for water. That's the critical angle for water. And notice how 48.75 never shows up here. But if I was to draw 48.75, okay. 
we see that the input angle is beyond it, so therefore it must reflect. But it doesn't reflect at 48.75, it reflects at 65. Remember, this was this, okay? Question? So anytime that the angle going into the water or going out of the water is greater than the critical angle, it's going to be the same? Every, yeah, every time this, the actual input angle is bigger than that critical angle, then it'll just reflect. And the angle in and angle out are equal and opposite. So why do you put sine of 90 again? Because you know it's going to be a critical angle? The critical angle is defined as the input angle when this bends over to 90. Okay. So I know that this is 90. I want to find what this is to get it to 90. Uh, okay. okay. All right, you guys, you guys did exactly this in lab. I, I, you might remember that with our blocks of glass on paper and traces and everything. Any other questions on this? Yes, Alistair. So if it was 48.75, it would be absorbed. Is that what We never is? actually used the word absorbed in anything we did. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm just going to say it at the critical angle, I don't know where the ray is, but it's you know, it goes along the surface, I guess. I'm not actually sure. But you would say it's absorbed. Eh, probably not, but it was irrelevant to this problem because it, it didn't do that. Yeah. All right, was that helpful? Okay, Joe, can you turn that off, please?